Hello, my name is Scott Cordell, and in this video, we're going to discuss the GitHub workflow and how that incorporates using Visual Studio Code. This tutorial is specifically for a course entitled CSC 230 Website Design, and for the students who are learning to use GitHub in the very beginning, how to incorporate into Visual Studio Code and build web pages using some progressive enhancement and a little bit of continuous integration. In this example, I'm going to actually walk all the way through the instructions I've provided to show you how to first get a repository make a branch, do some commits, make a pull request, and then finally merge it back into the master project. So let's get started. As you can see on the screen, what I have here is a set of instructions, and again, specifically for the GitHub workflow, which we reviewed in a previous video, and using a product called Visual Studio Code. Uh, a list of some of the courses we use here. But what I want to do is start at the very top with open a repository. Now in this example, I'm not going to open a repository. I'm going to start at the very beginning and create one. Uh, typically what we do for step one is you would have a repository, and I'll just show you. I've got some here that I've actually been using. So I could open up a previous repository, and that would be all of step one. That's it. Now, since we do not have one that is normal, that is already connected to this, what I'm going to do is start by creating a brand new one. And to do that, I need to be over in GitHub. So I'm here in my GitHub account, my account up here, and here's a list of repositories I could use, but what I'm going to do is click New. And on the New page, notice it's going to put it under you or under your account, and you give it a name. Uh, I suggest to my students that we put everything under a course name, and then whatever title the course is or something that means something meaningful to you. Uh, this course is website design, so we could call it website design. Uh, I could go further and even say it's for 2020 fall quarter. Uh, since I've already done that for this course, and this is just a tutorial video, I'm going to just call this CSE 230 tutorial. Please make sure and name yours according to either instructions from your instructor or something that you need to keep track of. Tutorial is not a good name unless you're actually building a tutorial. Uh, we're going to make this a public repository, and everything on GitHub is public. If you want to make it private, you actually get to then hand them a credit card and start paying for some of this. We're going to stick with a free public one. And I'm going to go ahead and click this Add Readme, and I want you to watch right at the bottom when I do this, another uh, statement's going to come up. So Add a Readme, and it says it's going to set up a main branch for us. That is incredibly useful. If you don't do this, then when we go to the repository, we have to actually go through the steps of naming the first branch and giving it something other than the name default. So just adding a readme, which is a text file that will be there, it's going to do this for you as well. And we just hit Create Repository. GitHub is very quick about this. Uh, it creates everything, gives it your name that you just told it, and starts a readme file, which has just basic text of the name of the project in it. Now, that's all we need to do on this site to actually do most of step one, which is create a repository. We'll then go to the code button here, copy this URL, and then return to Visual Studio Code. And again, notice I have nothing open here. In my file manager, there's nothing. So to get started with the next step, we're going to click the source control button and tell it that we want to clone a repository. Right now, the repository we just created is sitting out on GitHub. It is not on this system, or it's not on the local, and, and that's one thing you need to get a, a pretty quick grasp of. Out on GitHub is what we call the remote. Here on your desktop is the local, and you're going to be constantly dealing with everything local, but matching it up with the remote, or vice versa, pulling it from the remote to the local. So I'm going to clone the repository from the remote, from GitHub, and it says clone from GitHub, provide a URL. So I'm going to paste this one in here. Press enter, and it asks for a location. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm going to put it on my desktop, and that's it. A lot of times you're going to be a lot more careful than this. There's a lot of stuff on my desktop, but again, this is my tutorial, so I'll do it this way. I'll hit set repository location. A couple of things click by, and then I'm just going to hit open. And what it will show me is in my Explorer view now, here's my folder. Here's that only file that I've got there. And I'll get rid of the welcome page, just so you'll see. This is what it normally looks like. And if I click, there's my README file using MD language or Markdown language. 
and that's it. We now have copied everything from our repository out on GitHub to the local. Now all of that is just the first piece. We cloned a repository, gave it a location, press enter. Notice now that we are on the main branch, which we'll talk about here in just a minute when we get to the other one. So our main branch is down here at the bottom. Some buttons you'll have to keep track of. Uh, which branch you're on? This one right here is now synchronized. Right now we're completely in sync because we have just merged everything. And these are any kinds of warnings or anything you need to be aware of. And right now, yes, there is one warning. I've got a tiny yellow mark right here. It doesn't like that because I need a new line character or something, but we're going to leave that alone for now. Now the next step, we need to create a branch. Branches are used in GitHub, and if you'll take a look at the previous video, uh, branches are a way for us to do some progressive enhancement on our web pages while the web page is live. So we don't take the web page down, fix everything, and then repost it or republish it. Instead, it keeps running. We make a copy in real time, and that copy is going to be parallel running along our main branch here so that we can actually make edits and do some things without having to take everything down. Uh, other places call this continuous integration, uh, progressive enhancement. There's a lot of other terminology out there for it. So we're going to go back, click main, and we're going to come up with a branch name. So when we hit main, up here at the top, we click create new branch. Notice here's our main branch right here, plus some other things. But we want to go to our main branch and then name it. Uh, a lot of times your names need to be descriptive, but at the same time you don't want to fill this blank up. So I'm going to call this right now update, and then I use a numbering system for a lot of things, and I typically use three digits. So the very first one will be 001. Notice everything is in lowercase, no spaces, we use dashes instead. Check with your instructor to make sure that you're using the naming convention that suits that course or that instructor. So this is all I have to do here, press enter. And it started a brand new branch, and you can see that down here, that it moved me to that branch. At this point, that is not on GitHub. That's here in my local Visual Studio Code. To get it to GitHub, I click this Publish button, and it synchronizes that to make sure everything on this side is the same thing that's on the other side. Once that stops spinning, I could actually go out here to GitHub and check. And right now, nothing is there, but if I hit Refresh, I can now see that I have two branches. One is called main, and it's not showing the other because I haven't done anything to it yet. It doesn't like showing blank branches. But if I click branches, so my main branch and the update that I just created. Now I'm going to go back to the code button here just to make sure I'm on this. It doesn't matter right now because we haven't made changes, so GitHub hasn't really changed that much. Back in Visual Studio Code, I can actually make some changes. And remember, I've created a branch and I'm on that branch. According to the directions here, after that, then we published it. Now we're ready to make any changes, and those are, as it says here, additions, edits, corrections, deletions, whatever you need to do to make the difference that you needed to make in this. So I'm going to go over here and do nothing more than in this one, uh, give it a new line character so that it'll get rid of that error. And then right here, I'm going to simply say, I made a change. Now notice on the left-hand side here, I've got changes that I have just made. It's telling me here I have unsaved changes here. And if I go to my open editors, I can actually hit save. And this blue dot here is going to go away because it's saved. And it's going to show up here under source control because now I have a change that's pending, meaning that it's here locally, but it's not been committed. Now that is pretty much really all there is to the commit things, except we need to give it a name and actually commit it here locally. Now, what I mean by give it a name is we go to source control. And I'm sorry, not a name, but a message. And so what I want to do is um, I always like to begin this with a past tense verb, meaning I don't want to say, I just did this. I don't, I don't like going through that. So what I do is I want to just say updated, uh, and we updated the readme md file. That's the name of this file, as you can see right here. So we updated it. I could have said added statement or edited. Any of those would have been fine for this. And then commit. So we the whole step for this one is to go to source control, enter a message, click commit. It's going to tell us we need to move these from unstaged to staged changes. You can hit yes. If you don't want to see this again, you can hit always. 
I am a little uh, retentive about this stuff, OCD. I like to make sure I know that it's doing what I think, so I always just do yes individually. You'll see the tiny little blue bar moving here, meaning that it's doing something. Once it's finished, if you'll notice down here, I'm still on that branch, but now I have zero, one. Zero means I've got no incoming changes from GitHub over, but I have one arrow going up. In other words, one arrow going out to GitHub. So I need to back over here on our instructions. We've made all that. We've hit the check mark. And then remember, these are all just local. Nothing is on GitHub yet. Now we need to synchronize these, and this couldn't be easier. There's our synchronize button right where we were. It says this is going to push and pull, so we allow it to do that. And what this is doing is making sure that everything here on our local copy now matches everything out on GitHub. In the next steps, we're going to, at this point, go to GitHub, do all these next steps, and then finally at the bottom we'll come back to VS Code. So I'm going to go to GitHub, make sure I'm on the code page, and refresh that page. And here's the code page. I don't have to refresh, it's already showing this, but normally you have to come out here and refresh. And it tells me that there's something that I've had recent pushes less than a minute ago. The next steps are very easy. I'm not even going to flip back to the page. You can read those on your own, but they're about four clicks away from being done here. You compare and pull. Here, if you need to say why you actually did this update and what you added and who needs to discuss it, then you create the pull request. If you're working with the team and collaborating through all this, other users can actually come in here and comment or turn your project off and say, sorry, this is bad, and they can actually come in here and rebase everything. Well, there's a lot that they can do. They can close it. They can do all kinds of stuff. But since we are doing these projects individually, there's very rarely ever going to be a reason to not click this. It's green, which means there are no conflicts. So we hit Merge and Confirm Merge. Once we get this purple block, it changes to merged up here, meaning everything on the remote side on GitHub is now completely updated. In fact, there's my change now, and it is on my main branch. The problem is back here on the very last step says go back to Visual Studio Code. Yes, my changes are on this branch, but if I go now back to my main branch, no changes here. Remember, this is our local copy of the main. We need to make the changes or need to get the changes from GitHub. So again, we just synchronize one more time. Notice there are two changes. Uh, the reason there are two is one of them is the change that we just approved, but the other is the final pull request and merge that's done. So we hit push pull or synchronize again, hit OK. And there are our changes back in our file. So we've made a branch, made some changes, did some commits, did a pull request, reviewed everything, did a merge, and then finally over here, came back to the main and synced. And those are all the steps you need to do to make these changes. At this point, you're ready to go through the next change, whichever it is. And to do that, you would just go back up to step two. And once again, create a brand new branch, make all of those changes and commit them. Push those to the remote by clicking the sync button. Then go to GitHub. Make a pull request, discuss it if you need to, and again, a lot of language here of what you need to do there, and then finally merge it. Go back to Visual Studio, go to Main, hit uh, Synchronize, and then you're done. So in this video, we briefly discussed how to go through a cycle of using the Git flow, uh, workflow, the GitHub workflow, using Visual Studio Code. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.